Yeah, we got a little time. Where would we put the uh, large screen? Would we? Could we put the multi connection like on a little table and then have it, you know, wireless to the TV? I don't know. Could, yeah. We could. The only problem is that we have that wireless connection. Maybe that maybe that argues for using it, yeah. But you know that's that it's Nice desks, nice chairs. The other day. How much were they a pop? just because it looks like we've got a smaller audience. So I'm going to start off. My name's Chad Covey. We've got most of the UNM Law School here. Cindy Johnson, who's my director, boss, Danny Cisneros, Tony Anderson there with Media Services. We'll do a meet and greet. Chris Hayes. Chris, hey. Art? University of Arkansas. And you were at the last session, which is good because they brought up the SharePoint thing. So it's a number of ways to skin a cat. And, and you are? Thanks for you. Okay. Florida International, right? Okay, I think uh, I think your dean a while ago was our ABA accreditation, one of our on-site folks at Texas Tech a few years back. So it was nice, maybe formerly a judge, if I remember correctly. Sound right? Yeah. So it was kind of a younger fellow. Yeah. I talked to him on the phone, so it was pleasant to deal with. So we're just kind of passing around names since. This is about, I guess, the more the personal touch than anything. You are? Jason. Jason, that's right. We met a couple years ago. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I know you were at the last session, too, so it sounds like we didn't have a fan of SharePoint uh, in the audience. But, uh, you know, it's, it, this is more about process and people than tools. You know, there's a number of ways to skin a cat, so that's kind of right. what hopefully this will be about. I'll give it a couple minutes. We're not in a hurry here. Is everyone here on Banner as far as your kind of university ERP system? Banner? Yeah. No? Where are you guys? FIU or Banner, PeopleSoft, 
Give us up. Oh, okay. Hi there. I guess Ben stole everybody. The other competing one. Oh, we had all the, um, a bunch of those cool little mini sessions too. All right. Kind of a rough, have you guys gotten rough costs yet, or? I have an input. 12 rooms worth, or? For 12 stations. Oh, stations, okay. Yeah, they have them in the main campus now. And, you, and I guess you've gone over the main campus and it seemed like pretty good equipment they had. Really? Oh, okay. Students love it. And that was what, computer? Probably East Texas, if I had to guess. Oh. <laughs> There's also a Toad Sock, Texas, oddly enough. Um, so we were kind of making some greetings. I think we had a couple gentlemen come in. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and kick off. Let's go around the room. We'll just uh, kind of introduce ourselves again. I'll kick it off. So I'm Chad Covey. I'm with the University of New Mexico School of Law. Uh, let's start and we'll work the middle, then the outside. Oh, I'm Cindy Jones. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks, everybody. Um, so a few of you were at the previous session, which uh, clearly Elmer and John, whoever designed the, uh, the schedule for today, was, uh, was useful because uh, Cornell Law Library was using Drupal, Box, and other technologies um, in the same way that you can use SharePoint. Uh, over here, there was another technology they were using, which I totally, what, do you recall what it was? We had SharePoint, the Law Office, It may come to us. If it does, yeah, uh, any questions along the line, just let me know. Um, so basically, this says SharePoint. Um, it could be any technology. So it could be Drupal. It could, be, uh, it could be some other open source. could be something you pay for. Maybe you, with your campus uh, ERP implementation, Banner, PeopleSoft, you've got uh, the capability to handle a granular level, a, well, really a personal level, um, onboarding, separations, and other human elements. Uh, so don't I don't want to restrict the conversation solely to uh, to SharePoint and so as as you know some of the some of the items we will have here are strictly about the technology but um, I guess I'm, I'd, I'd ask if you can kind of think about the process you know if you think about when you have new people coming on board into your organization or as people leave uh, how's that being handled is it being done well um, and so again, uh, at any point, uh, please feel free to ask questions to stop me from going too fast. Or I've been living in the SharePoint world, and the workflow's a little bit kind of deep. So there are some things I'm probably assuming. So if you have any questions, just say, "Hey, slow down. Let me take a quick look here." All right. So, or rather than a quick look, slow it and take a, uh, a longer look. Um, so we've got quite a few players uh, in our processes in terms of, uh, again, the onboarding, the separation. This is the HR lingo. Uh, they're not, uh, these groups don't mean to imply that they maybe squabble like the Olympians of old did. Um, actually, I think they get along pretty well. There's a lot of work getting done. One of the issues we encountered, though, that, you know, work was getting done, but there's some communication issues. And actually, rather than squabbling, I think, uh, what happens what's, in a good way is a lot of these folks here, um, they've become 
um, almost like a, a, a listening post, a radar net, where you've got a lot of these elements, these different uh, gods and demigods, who they see something happening in terms of like somebody in the units uh, coming on board down the down the line, staff, faculty, so forth, and they they start communicating to the others. Then eventually, optimally, a, uh, an actual SharePoint workflow is triggered, and I'll get into that how what that looks like and how that happens. So uh, again, just a nice little picture there, but. We don't, we don't have any elements or that squabble. Uh, to go through real quickly, we've got our own two HR people within the law school at Uni University of New Mexico. Uh, but they, you know, you might think, wow, that's, that's a lot. Um, they actually have multiple hats. They're, the law HR and the law facilities folks are actually pretty much the same people, and there's a couple of other folks uh, who are on the security side as well. So a lot of these, uh, these folks here are doing multiple things, which is, it adds complexity, and that's why another reason why we did the workflows. Workflows. Um, so the problems we encountered were, uh, we well, a number of times we had faculty who would show up in the summer. Um, there was kind of a, a bi-directional problem. Um, a lot of times, you know, we're in the middle of the country, New Mexico. Folks are coming in from the coast. They're coming from up north, all over, really. And they use the the summer travel to get to Albuquerque as a chance to you know to get a road trip in, and so they maybe gave a somewhat you know vague date to our HR people as far as when they would arrive. Uh, on the flip side, you know we weren't really asking for a, a precise date, and so what, one of the things we had happen where people were showing up, office wasn't ready, computer obviously wasn't ready, phones weren't ready, and they take some time at UNM. Uh, and, uh, and actually, they, no one, you know, at the front desk or no one in the building knew they were going to be there. So that led to some awkwardness. Um, along with that, uh, what we have as well are we've got a fair number of um, staff and, and faculty who are able to hire. Sometimes those are temp, uh, sometimes they're full time. Often as not, they're going to be students. And so what we'd run in there into as well is hires are made and even the HR people were not told about it. The, uh, there's, a, there's generally a manager of students. That person may not know in time. And so particularly with students, uh, you have a problem where they weren't getting paid. And that's a real problem because I think you all can probably remember at some point, you know, if you're a student, you live paycheck to paycheck. Each paycheck is really critical. So someone not getting paid is bad. So these are, yeah, problems. Um, and again, we fired up the workflows to try to get rid of that. Continuing on with that, uh, we've got our uh, Bertie Wooster quote there, half the world doesn't know how the other three quarters live. Uh, we've got a fairly large building, the law school itself. Next to it is our, is our uh, law center where our HR folks hang out. Again, it's, it's right across the way, it's pretty close. Everybody's got email, but um, sometimes you know communication was not as good as it could be. And again, so we, we had the uh, we have the unhappy faculty showing up as a consequence. Um, we've got the security implications. That was really for IT. That was a big problem for us. Um, at my previous place of employment, too, people leave. Uh, sometimes they their access isn't all that critical. Sometimes it is, and we didn't hear about it. So we're not we're not disabling or deleting that account. So that can be a real problem. The uh, um, and what really actually started all of the process of where we sat down all of these units and said we need to figure something out, we've got to do better here, was the out of date directories. Our directories were not reflective of, of people on staff, of the faculty who were there. And so and you know phone numbers as well. You go to the directory, you let you've got a name for somebody and you can't find them on the directory so there's no way to call them. And that in initiates calls to somebody else, email, so it's it it it's, it gets a little bit hairy. One of the issues I'll really try to st stress here, it's important for faculty, important for staff, and even down to a student level, is, uh, is retention. If your onboarding process isn't good, um, you're going to lose people. I've seen it uh, happen. I think uh, there's a HR consultant called Gwyneth Paltrow who called it, uh, what was the term, um, conscious uncoupling, I think was what she came up with. It was about her divorce. Uh, that's what happens when you've got a flawed or, or really non-existent onboarding process is you'll bring somebody in, uh, nobody's there to greet them, you know, to get them set correctly on the first day, and so that conscious uncoupling starts. They're already thinking, man, you know, I'm not sure about this organization. 
So if there are any other flaws, issues within the unit they've joined, that bad or lack of a uh, proper onboarding, onboarding day, they're, they're looking for the door. They may not even say it to themselves initially, but it's happening. The other thing to keep in mind is, I don't know if this is a, um, um, a kind of a generalism within the HR world, if, it were, if it's applicable only to UNM, but uh, when you consider the time that goes into the interview process, all of the reaching out to HR to get things done correctly, before that person's even reached the front door on the, their first morning and touched it, you've spent about $15,000 on average. So you've invested all that time, really all that money, to get talent in. Somebody you like, you picked them, you, and they're there. They're ready to start work. But if you don't have your onboarding process down, if it's not good uh, and you lose them, then you've, you've blown all that time and all that money. So it's important to, to make people feel like they're needed and they should be. Uh, one other issue we did encounter a little bit later was uh, uh, we ran into some folks who uh, universities like ours, but we're we're relying a lot now on on temp hires. Generally, those are folks who are here for about six months, uh, and you know uh, I think this is a good sign as we were able to the law school is able to hire people who they came in as temps, but then we were able to retain them, keep them as as full times. Also, kind of the flip side of not feeling the love is we would have those folks who became uh, full-time. Um, they still, because of communication issues, folks weren't told that they went from temp to full-time. They didn't go in the right email groups, the right security groups. Uh, and so, you know, they're, again, they're not feeling the love. Some, some communication doesn't go to them. There's a little bit of angst about that. Uh, on the banner side of things, if you're a banner school, if you go from temp, to full time, um, if, if at the higher levels, uh, the um, the uh, the banner system is not told that someone who is temp has gone to full time, then their banner access is lost. And we've run into that as well, where we had financial people who lost their access for a few days. And if you've got financial people sitting at their desk uh, without banner access, finance access, just browsing, then that that's that's not ideal. All right, so start to get into the dive uh, into the SharePoint side of things. Um, you could, uh, so far as I can tell, University of Law, um, I know, we are running SharePoint, our own on-premise SharePoint 2013. We have our own active directory. The folks from Cornell had to deal with some things with the net IDs, they, so they were using Shibboleth as kind of an in-between to handle um, authentication. Fortunately for us, we didn't have quite as much of a hurdle. We have our own AD um, and our own on-premise uh, SharePoint. I'm pretty active on the various MSDN uh, uh, SharePoint boards. I have not seen a lot of complaining from folks about the um, the online uh, SharePoint being a problem when it comes to the workflow engine. So I think you could safely go with one or the other. Uh, so along with MSDN, we have a subscription. If you're in the educational space, it's it's under a thousand dollars. It's worth it. You get four support incidents for anything in the Microsoft portfolio. And you also get access to this MS, well everybody has access, but if you have a paid for subscription, um, you, uh, guar uh, Microsoft guarantees that they will have an answer from someone pretty competent, or often is not, you know, again, expert. Um, they'll have an answer to your, any question you post on the forums within 20, uh, 48 hours. So that's pretty good. Um, and there's a lot of other things that come along with that subscription. And I think uh, Azure was brought up. Um, that was Dan who brought that up. You also get access to Azure. Um, quite a few hours, you can spin up an Azure virtual machine. Um, it can be just a Windows system, and then you add SharePoint, or you can actually go in and spin up SharePoint just like that. So if you want to get into rapid development, you don't necessarily have a SharePoint system, you could go the Azure route for, well, nothing. Uh, so that's platform. Next step is you're going to need or want somebody who's pretty familiar with SharePoint if they're going to be the SharePoint designer developer. Uh, the, um, on Linda, the Linda training, it's uh, Ginny Corder who does the training. You're looking about two to three days for that person. Persons, um, uh, two to three days of Linda training. It says, this note there, it's, she's excellent. Uh, it's, it's very uh, specific and on tax task. You go through the training. Um, bit by bit, and you'll be, after three days, you're going to be very familiar with designer and ready to go. 
The other kind of last more general item I'd note is um, we are talking about HR related things. Uh, and this is a development effort. A lot of, you know, so you'd think, wow, that's, that's a pretty big investment. We've got a time, you know, um, there's definitely some in, input time, but, you know, maybe this is months or years before we, we actually release this. I'd say I'd actually treat it more scrum-like and, um, you know, get somebody in maybe with a basic, you know, workflow, not, not, uh, not say like faculty onboarding or something like that, a little smaller, maybe something student-related. But get a workflow going. You start your interviews with the actors, the players, um, who are involved in all this process. And you'll find that there are things that were missed in the first interviews. You continue to develop and iterate that, that workflow and that process. Okay. So the last slide was the technology investment. Um, you're also looking at really the majority of your time is going to be the interviews with the players, um, finding out what they need. Uh, I'll, you'll see this repeated, but just to kind of make it clear here is, is with your work, workflows, you're going to have tasks. It's really workflows are just tasks and emails. Assign a task to somebody to get an email or just send an informational email out to somebody. What you really want to do is with these to-do lists, these tasks and everything else is use their words. You know, find out what you do and then say, you know, could you write up in this, in this reminder task or email what you want to see here or what somebody else, maybe it's a, a, a subordinate person to a supervisor, what they need to see in that email or task. So throughout this whole process, because we're talking about a system, and sometimes people start to get their backs up a little bit when they, when they think about technology and a system that's telling them to do something is use their words. It'll make, it'll make the buy-in a lot easier. Uh, so kind of with that system thinking as well is one advantage I've noticed is you have some folks who, particularly staff, who would maybe feel uncomfortable sending a to-do list, a task list, you know, basically. But you got to do this to faculty. Now the system, the SharePoint workflow, does it for them. So it provides a little bit of cover for somebody who would ordinarily not want to do that. Uh, okay. That was the, uh, I think it was the Stanford experiment where they, um, uh, it was based on the kind of the Nazi guard thing where if you have, if you have a higher power telling you to do something that, you know, ethically you normally wouldn't do on your own, um, you, well, they found people to do it. It was the, I think it was the shock thing, wasn't it? There was, well, that, that was the Stanford experiment with the shocking, but then the, uh, the Milgram experiment was in a prison setting, something like that. Basically, yes, yeah, within a system, people, things they wouldn't ordinarily do on their own because it's, you know, against their ethics and morals, when a system's telling them to do it, they might. So, yeah, this, so that's, this is kind of a tension here, um, not to get too theoretical, but, you know, the system can be a, a, a good thing, and, but you want to make sure it's not getting too oppressive. Um, unfortunately, with this... This is one of these things that developed somewhat rapidly. Uh, we had the sit-down meeting, you know, directories are out of date. I started interviews with folks, and, and we discovered, you know, we've, we've anecdotally, we've got a lot of other issues. I didn't keep metrics on how many problems we had. But my sense is, and if I'm lying here, I've got three other people who can, who can say, uh, uh, can disagree with me, is that our, our, the mad scramble events, the just-in-time stuff where somebody new faculty is showing up and thinking they've got an office phone and a bunch of other stuff ready for them and that wasn't the case, that's gone down, I think, yeah. fairly consistently. So life has gotten better with, with the, uh, the workflows in place. There's um, Another, another aspect of, of the, the system uh, is there's this, um, uh, one of the things I had anticipated but have, have, have noticed is uh, there's almost an internal enforcement to this where all of these players, now even the faculty, those faculty who are the occasional managers, they have, um, even when they don't know exactly what they need to do when something new is happening, somebody's leaving, somebody's go, uh, or somebody's coming in, they know that there's now a system in place, and so they, they start reaching out either to IT, to the HR folks, or something like that, uh, which, again, we're finding it useful. That's kind of that radar aspect. You have all these players. 
the players have expanded and so you've expanded your radar scope and so there's more ears listening so when there is a perturbation in the system a change that's coming somebody starts reaching out communicating emailing calling other folks going to their office saying, hey I think we've got somebody coming in or hey I think somebody's leaving do we need to leave account something like that additionally with the, the technology side uh, it does leave some artifacts on their interface, their desktops. They have emails um, that involve these, these workflows that they get from the system. And they also, uh, and, and through their browser as well, they've got links and things like that. So the, you know, they're, they're subtle, but there's these little lights now blinking on, on their console that tell them, you know, when you've heard about something or seen something, there's a, there's a system in place to take care of that. Okay, so the current workflows are listed there. Uh, one that we didn't have initially, but we discovered was born of a problem, was the, uh, the sabbaticals where we had the Goldilocks syndrome. That's when faculty went on leave, sabbatical, uh, through, for whatever reasons, communication kind of broke down, misunderstandings, they hadn't told um, the, uh, the deans who handled academic leave and then also HR that well, while I'm on leave, I may pop into my office. And with the law school, with our building, we have zero office space. So, you know, one person leaves, one comes in to fill that spot, usually a visiting assistant professor or an adjunct. So we had, you know, the professor not, uh, again, communication loop hadn't, hadn't connected appropriately. They come back to their office thinking they're going to get work done, and they find somebody sleeping in their bed who's eating their porridge, the visiting assistant professor who's filling in for those classes. So we created a workflow to handle that to make sure that communication, simple emails is all really, this isn't even task based. Uh, emails just go out to everybody involved saying, hey, this is, these are the dates, you know, when somebody was, is going on sabbatical. If uh, you plan to use your office, please contact so-and-so. So again, said in one of the previous slides, all of this stuff can be handled in Outlook. Calendaring, you can, you can schedule emails to go out at certain dates. If we always remember to do everything at the right time or schedule it, we could do it with Outlook, no problem. But SharePoint takes care of it because there's a human element. Oh, um, to get a little into the uh, technical details in terms of SharePoint, um, what you'll come across in uh, SharePoint designer land is you're going to see two things. You've got uh, what's called list workflows, and then you've got reusable workflows. I start off with reusable because that seemed like the appropriate thing to do, but I would I would avoid them. I don't see much use for them. You're probably going to want to select, in all cases, the list-based workflows. Avoid the reusables. The other, uh, the other thing is, is um, uh, of course, now a lot of people are still on 2010 SharePoint. A lot of people are on 2013. Finally, 2016 just came out. Still on prem. Microsoft, Microsoft says the next version after 2016 will still be on premise. They'll continue to support that. A lot of difference. They uh, basically Microsoft took. Took a lot away from the uh, the 2010 workflow, or they kept they had a lot of things, especially email handling in the 2010 workflows. Took a lot of that away in the 2013. So the the Linda stuff with Ginny Corder is very good. It's on point as far as 2013. But you're also going to come across, or your developer will, a lot of blogs, white papers, and so forth. We really want to be sure of like, is that person writing about 2010, or are they talking about 2013? One exception to that list, uh, and it's actually a big one, is uh, staff separations. Our HR folks have a, it's a long list, I think it's two pages now, of uh, things to handle when, when a staff person, a uh, member leaves. They, they've got it covered really well. They have their things to do. They have their things to tell other people to do, like somebody's leaving, tell IT to, to do whatever need, they need to do in terms of phones, um, uh, the account. And so it works pretty well, but if we needed to, we could spin up a workflow for them. Okay, uh, again, this is somewhat little into the, the SharePoint designer details. These are the conditions and those are the actions. I apologize, it's kind of hard to read. There's a lot there. As you initially or your developer gets into, uh, into development, uh, they may look at it and wonder like, well, I don't know if this does everything I need to. Generally, there is a way um, to, to figure out what you need to do. Again, with email, uh, Microsoft took some things away. What you can do, though, is you can start off with a 2013 workflow, and you can break out into other workflows. You can fire up another work 2013 workflow from your original one. You can fire up a 2010, and generally a 2010 workflow will do all of your emailing. Okay, 
So starting a workflow, unfortunately, because we do have, we don't have uh, heavy duty um, HR data in our system, but it's kind of a light. I can't really bring up the SharePoint site itself. I'll, well, I can show you our, we've got a room change workflow, but um, this one's a big one, uh, a new staff hire. This is, this is what it looks like to, to our users. So they go to SharePoint. Has anyone not been on SharePoint ever? No? Okay, good, good. So you all know what SharePoint looks like, the sites. They, um, it starts with a content template. So again, that's something that Dan was talking about, the Cornell folks are using SharePoint land as well, has content templates. Uh, all it is is we start off with the original form that uh, generally went through the HR folks. IT touched it a little bit. So it's just a Word doc. It's a Word template. And so we create a content type in SharePoint, and we attach all this field data here. So all of this stuff in terms of the word form is, is only human readable. It's not really, well, it's useful to the people who are opening up and potentially editing this document, but the real, the real meat of, of the items are in these columns here, the metadata. And so that's the stuff that the workflow can see. Some of this stuff is required. We've got their phone, their start date, that's a huge one. Name, obviously, we have to input their email because if it's a new person, have it. Um, SharePoint can't read it out of the system necessarily at office. All this stuff can be changed later. Uh, whether they're temp services, we've got it basically, that's a bit flip. So if something changes on that end, then the workflow can read that. The big one is, again, it's start date. So what we have is rather than just have those just in time, our HR folks, um, yeah, in this case, they can enter all this stuff in months before, weeks before, and the workflow will kind of go into a wait stage, wait for that date. Actually, it'll make a calculation. I'll say, okay, I know this person's supposed to come in. Take about five or ten days away, and then I'm going to start blasting out tasks and emails. This is part of making sure that the onboard process remains at the door to greet them on their start date is really crucial to that. So again, we've got old Word document. It's kind of a vestigial. Uh, my read is most of the folks who deal with this are really comfortable with the, um, uh, with the form data here. So eventually we can probably drop this. My suspicion is they like this uh, form data and they're comfortable with it because a lot of them are also banned users. I kept this around to try to integrate. All right, so on. All right. and then I think what I'll do is the break out of that real quick. So this is our SharePoint site. Um, let me max it. And what we have here, so it's a SharePoint list library. Um, actually, yeah, it's a document library to be appropriate. And this is, a, this is involving our room changes, uh, which I'll get to in a little more detail here, but we found our room change uh, activities were often the, the mad scramble and could involve a, a large part of our summer. What generally happens is um, if somebody leaves, retires um, on the faculty side, there's a, there's a pecking order. And so folks also in faculty, if they want that person's room, they can choose to if they're higher up on the pecking order, highest on the pecking order, they can move up to it. And that creates then a waterfall effect, domino effect, where we've got a bunch of room moves. And again, past few years, that had been a giant, giant time uh, commitment for a number of units within the law school. And also, it was just fraught with, with anxiety. So, developed this workflow to try to smooth that process a little bit. So, we'll kick it back into... Okay, so now what we're looking at is a screenshot uh, from SharePoint Designer. And we have the most complex workflow um, in the portfolio right now, which is the faculty account deletion. And as I started with, you know, we try to retain the human element. And certainly when you're talking about faculty leaving, maybe that they're retiring, you know, they're happy, everything's okay. Otherwise, it might be a little bit sensitive, and so the, the workflows are really built to communicate with the players, to remind the players to do things, and then the players go out 
and they go talk to the faculty, they call them, they, they send polite emails. Again, we're, we're trying to insulate the person who's leaving, in, all, in almost all cases, uh, from, from you know, some, some painful emails and communications and things like that. Uh, the workflows are, are basically, as you build them, pretty much just if then else. Um, so we start off with an email to a hiring group. Very official uh, that they are leaving, but then what we have is uh, what makes it absolutely official is a resignation letter has been sent where our person who handles our has to go in and say, "Yeah, it's been met." And then we have a resignation letter, and then and what we have here is. Um, Continues and then in my optimistic phase when I initially built this, I had it built again as a previous. Basically, say, okay, this person is going to end date is going to be X date, and so go ahead and remove 10 days from that number. What we found, even with faculty, my Also ran into a number of conditions almost immediately, or something like that. They we found it built something in to basically handle that. Okay, this was entered today. Obviously, doing that ten-day all these crazy emails and stuff. So let's go ahead and take a couple days away from that. Wait two days, and then all those emails go out. The same as with the other condition where we've been. Personal care and handling unique duties. Getting with on to that is um, it also then asks things like, ah, uh, yeah. So, bit of an intermission here. We've got our uh, our guy Altron who doesn't like having strings on him. Um, this goes into. A bit of the learning cycle uh, that I had is, you know, being very careful about what you send to people. So you have some users who definitely don't want strings on them, who don't want uh, these nags, these tasks to go out to them. Uh, and so my initial inclination was early on is to, you know, send out one reminder, one email, one task, and that, and that would be enough that the users, the players rather, would go into SharePoint. They would stay up to date, to date on their tasks and things would get done. Didn't find that was the case. And so, uh, in terms of the, uh, the ties that bind, do you go more barbed wire, do you go with a nice soft ribbon? I found that in time, you're probably gonna have to find a bit of a middle road in that, um, and there's a couple ways to do this in the workflows. Uh, you're gonna have to nag people more, probably with a daily reminder. The task goes out, gets assigned to a player. Again, this isn't the person leaving, this isn't the faculty or staff, these are the players that people need to get stuff done. You're, you're gonna be looking at a daily reminder. To, to get these tasks taken care of. So, um, again, as you start off doing any, any sort of workflow base, it may not be SharePoint, you can kind of start nice, but my bet would be that you're gonna wanna build into your process, your iteration, uh, something along the lines of, yeah, we need to, there needs to be a daily nag on this deal. All right, so with SharePoint, probably other products have this. Uh, folks have, if it's an internet and have a portal, they can go in, you know, they've got their own view of things and they have their own tasks. Uh, also built up a page so that, what I call a task clearing house here. So again, unfortunately it's kinda probably hard to read. Actually, it's really hard to read. We've got a listing of the room change tasks. Nothing there right now. That will change, probably. Yeah, so there'll be a bunch of stuff there. We've got some new hires coming in, so We've got facilities has been, well, they're actually telling themselves they've got things to do. I know I've got a provision computer for these two new hires. Uh, help desk, kind of a general email. That on the board right now um, for some new faculty we've got coming in. So that's new faculty hires. 
no account deletion. Well, actually, we've got one where Ramona, who's our HR person, she needs to, uh, uh, some keys have not been returned. So, system's not talking to the person who needs to return the keys. Kind of important. Um, and again, that's, UNM wants their room keys back, but for the uh, succeeding person in that office, you know, there's all Right now, just uh, we've got just a reminder for a new staff hire. There's some uh, we've got some echo track has been used at our at our law school. Some things. So, when did you make this screenshot? Because I can't. Ah. I already did it. I know. <laughs> there we go. So uh, it, was, it was a it was a couple weeks ago. Okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's why. That's why you have to do the daily gang. So yeah, it's not just a SharePoint thing. This is a behavior thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you assume you assume I the best. Badly? What's that? Did you just say I behave badly? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. User behavior. It's user behavior. So, um, all right. So continuing on with law account. Uh, the well, you know what? This kind of skips ahead a little bit. All right. So. This was in my early phase, thinking that you know code reuse and everything else that I could maybe for student, staff, faculty, I could have one workplace. So I'd start off with law account deletion. That was called something like law faculty account. Like naming your child when you're talking about subsites, workflows, uh, your libraries, um, anything. Got to get it right the first time. Block out deletion is really it's faculty account deletion here. Maybe something like separation would work. Uh, so the, basically, this is just continuation. Uh, an email goes out to someone in IT. You know, does this. Uh, we've got the key oversight, which you saw an active task on that. And then this is the strings attached. You can actually do this without really coding anything. It's built into tasks. In this case, I think I just did it to have uh, uh, a representation here. But you can create a loop that runs every day. It sends an email every day plus five minutes to our HR person to reach out to the person. Then we continue with the last slide for this workflow, which um, most of, going back to the you know, directly to the account today, almost, yeah, all of our workflows except this one end with our communication. Getting an email saying like, so-and-so has left, um, you know, please update the directory appropriately. And they get, uh, they, and it's in, person's gonna be a merit. They do certain things. Workflow is not telling them to do things. It's just certain things if they're maritime, otherwise, no, they really are leaving, then you could probably take them off the directory. So up there, um, communications gets notification. On then, this is kind of the complex stuff where the human element comes in where how long. She plugged some things in, and it basically she said, yeah, if this person told me I'm done with email six months out, then it reads that date, and it sends a notice to our system administrator. So on the IT side of things, we don't have an open. Actually, could have some pretty good. But it basically uh, completes the loop that ties everything up. Last thing as well is, uh, again, a lot of what this stuff, you don't, have, you don't need SharePoint to do it. There's an email that goes out to the law hiring group, and that's really, it's a big group. That's IT, it's the advancement folks, it's the HR saying this workflow is complete. What you've told me is this person wanted to leave, they now appear to be gone. If there's a problem here to this large group I'm talking to, start talking to each other. So every process you have, whether it's SharePoint or if you come up with some other technology, you probably want to have this, this, uh, this little last email or something that ties the bow and says, we've done all this, 
you know, is it correct? Is it right? And then, you know, some sort of conversation say no. Would we'll start and say no, we haven't done it. Okay, so talked about it before, the summer room swaps um, for us were a real pain point. And again, if you're, if you're interested in whatever technology, but creating a process where you're handling these pain points, uh, again, ID, you know, that one, uh, that pain point, and then go ahead and start, you know, developing something to work on it and, and get rid of the issues for you. So for us, it's summer room swaps, and what we have is, uh, again, just a screenshot here. We've got the, you know, the digital tail, the, le the leftover word form that we had been using for years previously. But up above is the stuff that SharePoint, the workflows that SharePoint interacts with going to the office they left, vacate date, all that stuff. Uh, the dates are particularly important, the workflow is watching all of those dates because it's ready to trigger. Um, what will happen generally is the facilities folks say, all right, we've built the room, they've got to deal with movers coming in and moving a lot of content, books, journals, and so forth. Journals leave and they've got to go in and, and they've got to get somebody in to clean the room. What we were running into is contention, you know, we need to get phones in on the actual Basically, the workflow just says, it tells facilities, right, do your stuff, when you're done, set the say yes, they're done, workflow's trigger, go to IT and other people say no. Your control, you can do what you want. Part of that timing issue is uh, we are the middle people for uh, telecommunications at UNM, but the UNM has its own telecom group. They, what's their guaranteed date for getting things done? Is it seven to Okay, so it can be really bad. Um, and, and so that's why we need as much time. We need to know when the room's actually open so we can get the ball rolling on the phone stuff. And because we've got a large uh, um, clinic commitment, uh, it's very important that anybody who's associated with the clinic, is that if they're moving offices, that they continue to get phone calls. So we have to make sure they've got a working line, that they're, the phone number they give judges and adversarial counsel and so forth, that, that when that number is called, it gets to them and to their voicemail. So the phone swaps are a huge pain um, for us. All right, so uh, this isn't really necessarily a SharePoint workflow thing. Uh, it's kind of, again, user behavior. Tasks, if you have a task, if something needs to get done, do not give it to a group. Uh, you get into the we syndrome, where if you're in a meeting and people talk about how we should do this, wouldn't it be a great idea, but yet it never gets done? It's kind of like the law IT coat of arms, it points everywhere but us, or that's really not IT. That could be anybody, any group, but tasks go to individual, one person to get it done. You can always copy, this is again SharePoint thing, you can copy people on that task so other people can see. You can actually build in some, uh, some supervisory stuff into SharePoint workflows, but a task goes to an individual, that's how it gets done, and then maybe you do the nags as well. You know, that's a cultural thing you figure out. If you're sending um, uh, emails, that's good for groups or for a functional, um, a functional account, a distribution list, so a lot of people see it. That's like a push of information. Uh, I kind of assumed that people would go to SharePoint and check for, uh, for data, uh, for updates and things like that. They don't. So you can send emails, use emails to push data to people. Again, SharePoint in some ways should be, and these and the other type of products like Drupal and so forth, should be a replacement for SharePoint. They're not in a lot of cases, so you are going to have to push data through email to folks for these, these important onboard and separation and room um, processes. Oh. And then, of course, for whoever's doing your actual development on the workflow side, uh, they're probably going to want to copy themselves on everything. Um, on you know, BCC, copy themselves on all tasks, on all emails. That, that's just to confirm everything's working. Okay, so what we have here are a couple of, um, these are actually, the, the e and again, I apologize, they are a little hard to read, but. So this is an email that goes out to the, the, their manager. Okay, it could be faculty, it could be staff, telling them, and it copies a bunch of other people are that somebody has met their six months. So for the manager, uh, it's saying your employees at that six month cycle, if they're leaving, you need to do certain things like probably talk to HR other If they're staying, then we've got that banner access issue. And 
it tells communications or to communications group. Well, they probably, if they're temp, they never went on the directory, but now they need to. That's another thing, not feeling the love. If you're on the directory. This is the flip side. This is the onboarding. Pretty gentle, but more critical than really any email that goes out is it tells, again, the hiring manager, who may be kind of an occasional manager of hiring, hire of people, is like, well, you got somebody coming in, you know, here's a checklist from, from HR, from UNM HR about these are good things to do about that person showing up at the door. Um, but again, it's very general. This is one of the few emails that, again, doesn't go uh, strictly to the players, but will go out to the users beyond that. It's, it's trying to get across them that it's crucial that you do things right, and you don't lose somebody and that conscious uncoupling starts immediately. All right. Okay. Uh, we've got also, this is really the last uh, um, slide about the workflows, I think, is we have just have, this is basically a how-to for all things related to telecom, long-distance codes, how to dial out, how to access your email. This goes, it's the same for faculty and for staff. It goes to either one. Uh, you know, we find that least, probably, it's probably four to six um, tickets or phone calls or emails start from the new person asking how to use a telecom in the law school. So I built this to try to obviate some of those issues. Um, it's not been super successful because it's generally been buried in their inbox. We usually create accounts well before somebody's uh, arrived. They've already got a lot of email by the time they're there opening up their inbox. And so this, this guy is living down a ways um, in there. So something I need to work on. But again, with this type of communication, you can hopefully obviate um, eliminate a lot of later tickets and requests from the new user. Okay, so into SharePoint Designer concerns and issues and caveats. Uh, number one, I think SharePoint Designer 2013 is on the deprecated list with uh, Microsoft, but that list often doesn't mean a lot, as we'll, we'll discuss a little bit. There's a lot of items that have been on Microsoft's deprecation list, and they're still out there, still in use. So just something to think about. Uh, I don't think it's going away. We're again running, we're running a pure uh, SharePoint 2013 and designer setup, no, other than some security stuff, no add-ons. I'll get to that in a little bit as well, something to think about. Uh, you got the whole 2010 versus 13 versus 16 workflows. What is that going to mean now with 2016 coming out? Uh, big one is really shouldn't be doing anything as a farm administrator in SharePoint, but don't do it as a designer because your workflows will not trigger. So that's something I think that everybody encounters at one point or another if they get into the tool. And as I said, as with children, make sure you get the name and right with SharePoint because changing it is really hard. It's uh, in fact almost impossible. You just might as well redo things in some cases. All right, so all that said, um, we're running pure Microsoft technology. Uh, initially considered it when we were looking at it, but you know, my experience with third-party stuff and bolting it onto your SharePoint is it can be really scary, create some issues for you. Uh, that said, um, a couple of years later after we've invested in, in the workflow processes, I would strongly consider the Nintex folks um, as the add-on. They will provide you more features and capabilities than the, the straight um, Microsoft SharePoint workflows, and I don't see much complaint about them. I've actually seen a number of places where Microsoft is considered buying them. They're that solid. So SharePoint's great. Um, the workflows, you can do a lot with them, but you might consider the Nintex stuff. And I think with the educational license, you're looking at under $1,000. So something to think about. If you didn't want to go the Nintex route, you could maybe go with InfoPath. So InfoPath, along that deprecation list, is like a lot of things that won't die or sputin until the train comes, that zombie, crabgrass. Uh, it's Doug Edmonds in the printing question on his uh, printing press there. So you could maybe go InfoPath. Um, again, it's, it's been deprecated forever, but they just the uh, last week, they, they uh, had to kind of redo the 2016 install, removed InfoPath. A lot of people complained. So now they've got a separate install that brings InfoPath back. Uh, some other things you can maybe look at, you've got form services, that's the new technology in 2016. I don't really know exactly what that's going to do yet. Uh, you've got Microsoft Flow. That's, uh, I think that might be fairly useful for a lot of your basic workflows. Not a lot of buy-in, um, it's free actually, but not a lot of investment in terms of time to get Flow working. It's called Flow. 
Otherwise, you've got the if this, then that uh, web technologies as well. And another thing that won't die, sub zero, uh, exchange public folders. These are things you cannot kill, or Microsoft can't more than anybody. All right. Uh, if you do invest in the uh, SharePoint side of things, you're going to come across a guy from Australia named Spence Harbor. In fact, you should look him up if you're thinking of making this investment. All of his recommendations are really spot on. And uh, he actually, he is, his va he's value added. You'll go to a Microsoft white paper uh, to say roll out the workflow engine on SharePoint to do something. And it, it doesn't work. It doesn't get you where you need to be. You're probably going to want to refer, refer to this guy. So. Okay, so you've got some general code uh, concerns. The only product we've come across that without restoring the entire um, database that your SharePoint content is on, and that can be that can be up to well, if you stay within the white paper limits, about 200 gigs. Um, the only product that doesn't require you to do a 200 gig database restore is the AppPoint Doc app. So something to think about is if you have a problem, how are you going to restore that code? Uh, Again, another thing they took away was in, in 2013 is they took away versioning, version control. They had it with the 2010 workflows, Microsoft took it away. I don't know why, I've not seen anybody say why they did it. Um, Nintex does have versioning. So again, maybe that would argue for them over that. And um, yeah, along with um, the versioning and other general development issues is it's nice to have a development side and then a production side. It's not, uh, workflow's not really great for that. Moving them from one system to another are difficult. You're probably gonna look at a third party product. What Microsoft offers is not very reliable. And so if you wanna go the free route or, or nearly free share date's gonna be pretty good. And you can pay more money. You might have an administrative module from, from AvPoint, uh, from Metalogix is another big one that will handle that. But the Microsoft uh, stuff is not great. Okay, so, We've got um, at the law school four instances of Spiceworks for our ticketing system. I'm going to look at with various people to see how we can kind of integrate those a little bit better with, uh, with our workflows. And, uh, you know, ideally, if we had some way to tap Banner, the uh, university's ERP system, that would be nice to make sure we maybe get data earlier and it's, we're not creating parallel data streams. But uh, I, that's not going to. It's just not going to happen. We've had conversations before about data integration. It takes a long time. I doubt they would give us this. We, just getting some bare bones student stuff was really hard. But if uh, you know, if the world was a great, uh, wonderful place, they would be more agreeable, and we could do that. Um, one thing I want to call out: if you do have a, a really solid developer, developers on staff, is uh, within workflow, the SharePoint workflows. You've got this call HTTP web service. That's basically your reach out to anywhere you can get, you can authenticate and get data. That's how you get it. So SharePoint can publish data and it can pull data from ever, anywhere. And then of course within SharePoint generally, you've got the rest, the rest service stuff. So it's, it's powerful. I haven't had a chance to explore that as much as we'd like. And again, as I've said previously, uh, we're gonna go entirely forms and drop those Word documents. Don't need them anymore. All right, um, any questions? Yeah, um, let me see if we can. It's actually, well, yeah, actually, I, it's safe to show this. Good question, because that goes into, you've initiated the data, what happens if something changes, and something always changes. So this is, this is where, you're probably going to start something more like here. If, if you're the person going in initiating, it'll be here and you just create a new element. Um, well, you'd probably go with the quick edit. So at this point, you can create, share, you make SharePoint look like an Excel spreadsheet. So that's where someone would go in and they'll just create a new element as you would with Excel. And there'd just be a bunch of drop-down lists where they do the yes, no's, they, they select a date and that sort of thing. And then they hit save. 
and then the workflow sees that new element and starts processing, starts assigning tasks and sending emails. So that's probably what it's going to look like. And again, that's that actually goes back to then, okay, they've made the change, they can do it from the Excel-like interface, or they can go here and edit this record in the system and make the appropriate changes. A lot of times with rooms, phone numbers, and things like that, it's TBD, so they can go and enter that in. Yeah, it, at this point, it'll all be SharePoint, um, and it, we you know, totally strip word out. Again, that's a conversation with the players the owners of the tasks and the process to find out what they want, but more than likely, yeah, we would just, we'd have notes fields um, like we have here, um, but more than likely, yeah, we can just drop the Microsoft Word document. As all of kind of the Yeah, it's, it's useful so for me. Oh, well, that's good to hear, because for me as a taskmaster, it was, that was really why I built it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, I guess the takeaway is, is yeah, this is all SharePoint, but uh, if you're on the IT side, you guys are concerned about the account staying open um, or getting created on, on time if it's somebody coming in new. You definitely don't want an open account if they've left. Um, but to maybe, you know, the takeaway is go back to your organization, you know, find out are we handling people coming in and leaving, you know, well, and if we aren't or if we could be doing better. Is there a technology? Um, is it policy? Is there a process improvement that we could do to make sure that, particularly on, on, the, uh, on the incoming side, that we welcome people? And one thing I'd note is Cindy's actually really good, it's, it's subtle, is she announces to all of the law school that, you know, somebody's coming in. Um, or somebody's leaving and we have a little party. Uh, so that's, that's a good, you know, warm and fuzzies kind of thing. But also it's, it's, it's like the workflow, it's a communication where everyone knows like, oh, HR folks also get that, somebody's leaving. They didn't get us a form or something like that or somebody came in and we have to take care of something. So however you do it, you wanna make sure that kind of on a security side for other reasons, your separations are handled well, but particularly on the onboard. Again, this is talent, these are people you've selected you want to make sure they feel like uh, this is the organization they want to stick with. So uh, if you want the slides, um, I'll, I think I can throw them up on the Cali site. Just let me know. If you have any questions at all on, on the uh, SharePoint workflow side of things in Designer, then just, uh, just reach out to me. I'm Chad Covey at the UNM Law School. Pretty easy to find. Be happy to talk with you about the technology. And I wouldn't, I, if I were deeply concerned about the uh, workflow engine being taken away by Microsoft, I wouldn't have had this uh, presentation. So I think it's, InfoPath is maybe a little bit shaky, but uh, SharePoint workflows aren't going anywhere. So it's an investment. I feel like you could, Intex may be the, the, the better. Any questions otherwise? Thanks, everybody. Two. Oh, was it two? I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, I'll get it over and we'll get everything connected. Okay. You're going to help me get it connected? Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. We'll make sure it works. Good job. Thank you. That was, it was brutal for us at Tech. We never, we did never, well, and part of that was because, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. was because of the, um, you know, IT was on the library side, yeah. and all the administration was on that other side, and so, yeah. I mean, we got, everybody got along, but yeah, it's just, yeah. communication didn't, yeah. wasn't happening. All right, around the rest of them, and I'll
very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I'm at a startup law school, so we're still building our infrastructure. So oh, where? Where's that? Uh, oh, you're at the uh, University of Texas at Dallas. That's right, that's right. Yeah, uh, it was uh, Jennifer was here last year. In, uh, First year of operation, we were an independent. Well, it's a shared services IT. Okay. You guys had, had started your own stuff and then they are kind of coming in. Well, I mean, we've had. Um, Shared services. Mm -hmm. They're good. Oh, they're good. It was getting the administration. The president's office now is too. has given us the old municipal court bill. People that are actually working doing the job for the last two years are finally getting some say. Use for classrooms and all. Maybe. They're also losing some space because there's. Four. 